Hi everybody, I am Net Nursing Prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to take a blood sugar. But before we do that really quick, I wanted to talk about the normal ranges of what your blood sugar should be. So if we look at our chart here, we have normal, pre-diabetic, and diabetic. And then we also have our fasting ranges and then our ranges after eating. So in a normal person who doesn't have diabetes, our fasting blood sugars should be between 70 and 100. Um, and then after meals, usually two hours after meals, is going to be less than 140. So anywhere in this range, less than 140. For our pre-diabetics, it's 110 to 125 fasting and 140 to 200 after eating. And then finally, for our diabetics, it's greater than or equal to 125 fasting and then greater than or equal to 200 after meals. So this is really important. You want to know what's normal for your patient because if your patient is non-diabetic, pre-diabetic, or is diabetic, it's going to be a little bit different depending on what's going on with them. And people who do have diabetes get used to their sugars being at a certain level. So while these ranges are awesome and they're really helpful for us to remember what we want to aim for, if somebody's been, you know, diabetic and they haven't been diagnosed with diabetes and they're used to hanging around the 300s and you uh, get them into like the 200s, that's a big drop for them and their body's not used to that. So it's something they're going to have to gradually get used to. So lots and lots of education when it comes to diabetic care and also in pre-diabetic care as well because we want to help prevent these people from becoming these people. The next thing I want to do before I actually take somebody's blood sugar and do our little scenario with our patient is actually show you the supplies that you're going to need to take a blood sugar. So these are the supplies you'll need to gather before you take your patient's blood sugar. So of course we need a pair of gloves because you're going to be exposed to their blood and you want to make sure that you're protecting yourself. The glucometer, which is the device that actually reads the blood sugar. The test strips, the test strips come in this bottle, but I took one out just so you could see what they look like. And you need to make sure that you have the test strips that are compatible for your glucometer. You also need an alcohol wipe, some gauze, and then this is a disposable lancet. This is what we're gonna actually poke them with. So now that we've reviewed our normal ranges and we've gathered all of our supplies, let's go ahead and jump into our patient scenario. So the first thing we're gonna do before we enter the room is we're gonna wash our hands, do hand hygiene, we're gonna provide patient privacy, and now we're gonna verify our patient with their name and date of birth. So could you please tell me your name and date of birth? My name is Bob Dallas. I was born July 27th, 1977. All right, and that's what it says on my chart, so we have the right patient. So, Mr. Dallas, we're going to be checking your blood sugar today. Oh, well, that's interesting. <laughs> okay, so first I'm going to get my gloves on. We always want to wear gloves just in case we touch any blood. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to pick a finger. Do you have any particular finger that you pair? How about this one? And we always want to do it on the side of the finger, never on the tip of the finger. So we're going to take our alcohol wipe and we're gonna alcohol wipe off the site. You never wanna like, like blow on the finger or go like this to the finger to get the alcohol to dry. Just let it dry, just give it a sec. While it's drying, we can insert our strip into our reader here, our glucometer. Once you insert it, it should automatically turn on. Then we can take our Lancet device. This is a disposable Lancet, so one time use only. Take off this bit, that's the protector. And now we are ready to poke our patient. So, one, two, three, poke. Get rid of that in our sharps container. We get a drop of blood. We wanna wipe away the first drop because that's not accurate. We can't use that drop. And then the second drop is what we're gonna put in the meter. There we go. And it's taken it. We're gonna give our gauze to our patient so they can hold pressure to so stop bleeding. And there we go, it's already done. 107, so that's pretty good. We just ate lunch, so that's <laughs> pretty good for just eating lunch. Do you have any questions, Mr. Dallas? 
No, I'm very pleased that I have uh, low blood sugar. Okay, thank you. All right, if you need anything, um, just let me know, okay? Okay, thank you very much. Okay. So I wanted to talk about some potential issues that could occur when taking a blood sugar. The first of which is the patient won't stop bleeding. So you've taken the blood sugar, everything has gone great, it's over now, but now their finger is still bleeding. This could be because they have some sort of clotting disorder, or they could be on a medication like a blood thinner that causes them to bleed more easily. So what you do in this situation is you hold pressure. If it is longer than five minutes, if you're holding pressure for longer than five minutes and it is still bleeding, you want to call the doctor and let them know. The second issue that could pop up is the meter isn't working. So if the meter isn't working, what you're going to do is start all over, try again, get a new strip, follow whatever the manufacturer instructions are for the meter, and try again. If it still isn't working, then you need a new meter. It could be a battery issue, maybe it needs to be charged, maybe the batteries need to be replaced, maybe some quality controls need to have been done on the meter and they weren't, something like that. So troubleshoot first, always follow the manufacturer's instructions, and if that doesn't work, then you need to get a different meter. The third one is you've taken your patient's blood sugar and it's very high. It's a very high blood sugar. So what do we do if somebody has very high blood sugar? Hopefully, we will have a standing order for insulin for this patient. If we do not have a standing order for insulin, we do not give them insulin. It is inappropriate for us to give any medication without an order. That would be dangerous and illegal. So do not do that. That's not within your scope of practice. But hopefully we have a standing order for our patient. On certain occasions, you will take somebody's blood sugar and it will be so extremely high that the meter will not read it. It will say error or it will say unable to read. Usually that's when it's 600 or above. So if it is 620 or something like that, it will only go up to 600. So it cannot tell you the exact number. So if that is the case, then you absolutely need to give insulin if it is ordered and you absolutely need to call the doctor and let them know that this patient has this dangerously high blood sugar. On the flip side of that is if they have a dangerously low blood sugar. So that's our final issue, number four, very low blood sugar reading on your meter. If your patient is conscious and alert and able to eat something, give them something to eat. That is the quickest solution. You don't need to have a doctor's order for that and it's the most convenient thing to do. If that's not the case and they are unconscious or they are unable to eat anything, uh, we give glucagon and hopefully there'll be a standing order for that as well. Just like the insulin, we're not going to give it without an order. We never wanna give anything without an order that is out of our scope of practice. So what happens if you have this patient and the doctor hasn't seen them yet and you don't really have any orders for them yet? You've come across them and they've fallen and the first thing you're going to do is a blood sugar and a blood pressure, right? That's what you do. And they don't have any orders for insulin or glucagon and they're having these extremes. You want to page the doctor. You want to page the doctor right away and do everything you can that you are capable of doing that's in your scope of practice while they return your call. One final thing I wanted to bring up in regards to blood glucose monitoring is this is a task that can be delegated sometimes, not all the time. If the patient is stable and otherwise healthy, then yes, you can delegate this task to assistive personnel. If they are unstable and they require careful monitoring, then it is your job as the nurse to take this blood sugar. And even in a stable patient, when the assistive personnel is the one who takes the blood sugar, it is still your responsibility to interpret the data. So they take the blood sugar, they put the number in the computer, and then it is your job to look at that number and decide what that means. Does this patient need an intervention or is this patient fine? So I hope this video was helpful. And if you have any comments or questions, just let me know. If not, I'll see you on the next one.